Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you doing today? I hope things in your world are good. Things are great here. I just got to spend like, I don't know, four hours or five hours with my girls. Um, I just kind of texted them, said, hey, do you want to come over tonight? We'll get some pizza or something and just hang out. And they were like, yeah, definitely. So we did that and we played some board games and we drew some stuff together and just had fun. And that was really nice. Uh, it's late now. So this is going to be a quickie, but uh, I just wanted to let you know that um, it's been a good day, and I hope that you've had a good day. Um, the one thing I did want to kind of mention was that I, I've had this kind of crisis of realization, or crisis of, not crisis of character, but this sudden realization um, that <laughs> it's, it's actually kind of a bit silly for me to say it out loud, because it's, it's kind of like I had one of those duh moments, but um, that, you know, woodworking is an art. <laughs> I know that. I mean, I'm not stupid. I did, I made something this weekend, um, I finished something this weekend that I shipped out. Uh, I told you I would show it to you eventually, but it was a secret. I completely forgot to take pictures, so hopefully once it arrives I can get some pictures of it. But um, it, it, the item itself was a very basic thing that did not need to be constructed with any level of detail, but I did anyway. And it turned out beautiful, beautiful little piece. And, and, you know, that's an art. It's an art to make something that is uh, m more function than form look good. And so woodworking, yeah, it's, a, it's an art. Um, not everybody can take pieces of wood that are, you know, unfinished and turn it into a piece of furniture that is attractive, and that sort of thing. But it, it never occurred to me that... <laughs> <I> <laughs> So what I've realized is a lot of people that I know of as woodworkers or as furniture makers or, um, you know, carvers or whatever, um, for some reason I've always thought that if you're going to make furniture, um, that's or you're going to make any sort of decor or, um, you know, larger items out of wood uh that's something that you do on like a client basis like you're going to have a client and that client's going to tell you what they want and you're going to make it and what i've come to realize is that quite a few of my online friends that are woodworkers that do make things for uh, not necessarily for a living but for a paid hobby or a paid hobby that pays pretty well um they make things and then sell them and it didn't occur to me that that was a route until very recently, like, yeah, that, that makes sense. Like, why why wait for a customer, right? I mean, I, some things, duh. You know, like making cutting boards. I could make cutting boards all day long. It's mind-numbingly boring work, but um, they turn out great and people will buy them. I could make headphone stands. I could make little things that are $23. But when you're talking about a multi-thousand dollar table, I've just always assumed that... Uh, you find a client first, and then you build to their spec. And instead, what I've discovered is quite a few people build first and then find a client later. And maybe that is the art of woodworking. Maybe finding the particular style that suits you, that is unique to you, that they can't go to a furniture store and buy. Uh, maybe that is the art that uh, then you, you create your art and then find a customer for your art. <laughs> and I just had that kind of momentary, like, oh, yeah, I should, I, maybe I should do that, you know. Um, I could buy a few hundred dollars worth of cherry and turn it into something really magnificent and sell it for a pretty decent price. And uh, maybe that's how you get clients. So, been thinking a lot about that. Um, you know, the dresser project is coming up very soon, and I probably will be taking lots of pictures of that. I did a complete fusion model of the whole piece, and I have all of the layout plans for, you know, cut lists and all that stuff. So it is something that if if I take pictures of it and I put it up for sale, um, and I could theoretically, you know, assuming I can finish the thing and make it look attractive, I could then take orders and produce that 
uh, on a semi-regular basis. So that might be, you know, an experiment for me uh, because I have come to the realization that people do that. But uh, <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. I, there are other things that I want to make that I think, uh, for instance, you know, I will be very soon, uh, probably within the next week or two, opening reopening uh, the Etsy store with quite a few board game themed items. I have a few prototypes that I've already finished and I need to get pictures and put those up and I'm working on a couple of more hopefully within the next week. Depends on how the dresser project works out. Depends on how much time I can spend down here. Um, we'll see. So yeah, I'm learning how this all works. I have all the tools. I have access to really high quality wood at really amazing prices. Right now all I need is customers and products that uh, I can manufacture here uh, in the small shop and um, I could have a lot of fun doing that. So who knows? We'll see. Thank you for being here as always. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, being amazing people and wonderful friends. I appreciate you and I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, Doc, wait! I want to ask you something. Today's random fact comes from Wikipedia. What product had the first barcode stamped on it? George J. Lauer is considered the inventor of UPC, or Uniform Product Code, which was invented in 1973. In June of 1974, the used first UPC scanner was installed at a Marsh's supermarket in Troy, Ohio. The first product to have a barcode included was a packet of Wrigley's gum.